Anastasia, welcome to the show. Thank you, Rob. So happy to be here. So obviously, as we just introduced you, you do a lot of great work with women specifically and in the world of health and personal development. So I'd love for you to just share your story. What got you into this world of obviously that starts with yourself, I would imagine, kind of having your own journey. So I'd love for you to share that journey of what got you into this work. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, anyone that is is working in personal development has their own story <laughs> that uh, led them down the rabbit hole. Um, and in in my own personal journey, um, this journey down the rabbit hole started in 2016 when my life as I knew it uh, fell apart around me or as I thought. Um, so I had been building my business, which uh, was going really, really well. And I was married and I was thin and I was, you know, all these things ticking the boxes of what a successful life looks like. Right. And one of the things that I think was just completely overshadowing all these things that I was doing and all these things that I had was the feeling of constant energy drain and overwhelm. Um, and I was just working and working and working and giving and giving and giving and being there for my husband, making sure all his needs were met, being there for my customers and my clients, making sure all their needs were met, being there for, um, I had a fashion brand at the time. So everything was just about like everybody else, what everybody else needs and what can I do to make sure everybody else has their needs met, right? And when I suffered adrenal fatigue or burnout, as it's called, which is very common amongst entrepreneurs, and it's almost even like kind of like a badge of honor, you know, like you worked yourself to death kind of thing. And it was when I suffered adrenal fatigue that my health like completely deteriorated. And when I physically couldn't work the way that I'd been working for those years, because it was a buildup, right? It wasn't an overnight thing. Um, my business fell apart. My husband decided that, you know, he no longer wanted to be with me. So my marriage fell apart. And I felt that I'd failed both publicly and personally. Um, I failed at business. I failed at uh, my finances completely disintegrated into nothingness. Um, just everything, everything fell apart. All these balls that I was juggling, as soon as I got tired and I missed one ball, all the balls came tumbling down. And it was really in 2016 when I was in the depth of my depression, um, having like the biggest pity party for months. Um, when I was on my sofa and I still get a bit emotional when I talk about this um, because it's it feels so far away yet it's so close <laughs> um, it was in 2016 when I was sitting on my sofa which was actually the only piece of furniture that I had in my new apartment because I'd left the home that I built with my husband and I'd left my office so everything was around me in boxes on this sofa which was also my bed and I was just feeling like such a failure and I had no one or at least I believed I had no one around me to feel sorry for me or just check in on me and see if I was okay or if I needed anything and I felt kind of unfairly treated because I was like I've given so much and in my in my hour of need there's no one here um, so what the hell like is this it is this is this everything that life has to offer and if this is it then I want out because I'm doing all the things I'm a good person I'm hard working I'm honest I'm I'm this I'm this I'm this I'm this so why the hell did I get stuck with such a crappy hand um and it was actually when I was contemplating the different ways that I could end my life um, that my mother had called me at that very, very instant, which is kind of like divine timing as well. Um, and she asked me how I was doing, kind of like a courteous, polite question that you always ask with someone when they answer the phone, how are you? You don't really want to know how they are. You're just asking, how are you? And I 
broke down in tears and I I was like why 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 did he leave me why did my business fail why you know where did all my friends go why 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 me why me why me classic victim consciousness which is what we're going to talk about later as well but I was you know being the the absolute victim in this story in this life and my mom had her own things that she had to deal with and she I guess she was trying to support me as best as she could but maybe she kind of got tired of me being stuck in this rut for such a long time because I'd stayed kind of stuck post you know separation post business failing and everything I, I kind of stayed stuck literally on my sofa for over two months um, I was applying for jobs but not really actively looking um, I was I guess in my head thinking that I was trying to get better but not really actively taking control of, of getting my health better and my mom just kind of like stopped and she triggered me so badly on this day she said to me you know when are you going to put this energy that you're putting into crying over something that didn't work out, crying over someone that doesn't love you into picking yourself up? And that was hard love, you know, like tough love when you, when you most need to hear it, but are least ready to hear it. So obviously I had a little fit and I hung up and I was like, no one understands, no one gets me. And I hung up um, and I went and I had a shower, which was probably the first shower that I had like in a week because I was so depressed. I wasn't even bothered um, in taking care of myself. And it was in that shower that I had this sort of divine, which now I recognize and I understand, which was um, divine guidance, shall we say. I had this inspiration, this moment of realizing the formula that I'm using doesn't work for me. Yes, it's a formula that seems to be working for everybody else, but it hasn't worked for me. I didn't get a great cake with the same recipe that everybody else is using. So if the formula is broken, then maybe I can try a different formula. I literally have nothing left to lose. I'm up to my eyeballs in debt. You know, I've already lost my marriage. I've already lost my business. I've already lost my pride, my friends, everything. So I have nothing left to lose. I can go all in and see where this takes me. I've already got a plan B. I've already like got a plan for how to exit should everything else fail again. But yeah, there's nothing left to lose here. And that essentially started my questioning everything, questioning my status quo, questioning the way that I was thinking, because up until then, I never questioned what I was doing and how I was thinking, because I was so kind of, that pattern was so ingrained, and I was following that path so um, blindly. And that started opening all these different doors because when you ask you receive so it's almost as if I kind of like placed the question out there I didn't know at the time to who I thought it was God I thought it was I don't know whatever I was like okay I'm literally going to try everything that I've never tried before or try do things differently than I've always tried before even if it's counterintuitive kind of like a Jim Carrey and yes man where I was just going to be like I just going to say yes to everything yes to everything um, and that's what I started to do. I started to attract, shall we say, the right teachers at the right times. And I was just following, following the breadcrumbs. I didn't know where it was going to lead. I just knew that the formula that I was using wasn't working. That's all that I knew. Therefore, any other formula will give me any other results. I think the main, the main realization that I had was, you know, this success life success you know image that I had in my mind of what life should look like didn't feel right to me so on paper I had all the things from the outside looking in I had the life I had everything but it didn't feel the way that I thought it was going to feel in having all these things so this time instead of chasing the outcome instead of chasing what things were going to look like I was going to uh follow the path to how things feel. What can make me feel better? What can make me feel more expanded? What can make me feel more inspired versus 
the hustle, hard work, push, push, push energy, I was going to, and I didn't realize it at the time, but now I understand, I was going to shift from masculine energy, so from push energy into pull energy. And I was going to allow myself to be pulled in any direction and, and allow myself to surrender to the pool rather than try to create my own flow. Well, that is a wonderful story and I appreciate you sharing there. And I think that it is, you know, oftentimes, as uh, one of my mentors says, the great pain teacher that mm -hmm. really is the guiding force that allows us to recognize, you know, we've gone too far in one direction. And like you said, oftentimes we're finding that someone else's blueprint, mm -hmm. not the right blueprint for us. And like you mm -hmm. said, a lot of times, you know, the idea of success is, you know, college degree, marriage, mm -hmm successful mm. business and if you check off all those boxes you're supposed to be successful but yeah, and that and that equals happiness right right. <laughs> right by someone else's standards like you said that very very well may be happiness for someone and that's great but it doesn't mean it has to be for you and i love what you said there in terms of the you know the masculine energy of the push and then the feminine more of the pull so i'd love for you to just kind of dive into that as to how you kind of found this this realm of energy in terms of masculine feminine energy and what made you realize that you felt called to work with women specifically so my first thing that i wanted to fix post breakdown was my business that was kind of like where all my focus was and it, it had been for all those years it was like the business the business the business right so okay how do I start a business differently this time and how do I work differently this time because up until now the formula right that I was using was um, and I've since identified it or I was starting to identify it as like a um, business for dummies blueprint, right? Like this is how you, you become an entrepreneur, you sacrifice your health, you sacrifice your relationships, you sacrifice your weekends, and you just build and build and build until it's big enough to sustain itself. So that, that formula I found that actually literally um, worked me into adrenal fatigue and worked me into uh, a state where I physically didn't have the energy to, to get up, to think I didn't have the cognitive capacity to to think clearly and this time I said okay so how do we do business differently I went and I did an MBA and everything that they were teaching me um, in in the MBA I was like I've tried and tested all this textbook bullshit and it doesn't work in the real world like this model doesn't work or it's outdated or or it doesn't work for me and I think that that was when I was like starting to question like, okay, if, if, you know, if the MBA um, is, is that this is how you build a business and all those entrepreneur blogs and all those entrepreneur people out there say that this is how you build the business. You get up at 5 a.m. and you work till like 11 p.m. Then how can I do it differently in a way that feels right and good and true for me? So I went from working, you know, 24 seven and sacrificing my weekends and my evenings and literally forgetting to eat to saying, OK, I'm only going to work 20 hours a week. And in those 20 hours, I am going to do more. So work harder in those 20 hours, but then the, the hours that I'm not working, I'm taking off. I'm not doing anything. Why? Because those are the hours that are my time. So that was really very, very much from moving from the push, push, push 24 seven to being productive when I am most productive and when I am most energetic and then taking a back seat and giving myself permission to rest the other times. And something that I'd like to say, masculine, feminine energy is, um, is not specific to genders. We all have masculine and feminine energy. However, uh, women because we have a menstrual cycle, have a 23, 28 day energy cycle. Whereas men have a 24 hour energy cycle. Men can literally, because of testosterone, can literally work hard, play hard, go to sleep, wake up the next day and do it again. And the, the nine to five corporate you know, business model as it currently is, was originally designed 
by men for men which is why you know it's 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 a it's a well-oiled machine that has been working for centuries and centuries because it was designed by men for men and then women joined the workforce and what we've tried to do is try to compete or try to fit into this existing 24-hour model that doesn't actually work for us uh, considering our 23 28-day energetic cycle and this was something that I really started to pay attention to when I started to pay attention to my own energy cycles. Which times of the month do I have more energy? Am I more productive? Am I more in my masculine energy when I can push, push, push? And it's exciting and it's fun. And then which periods of the month, um, which days of the month do I need to slow down? Do I need to rest more, nurture more, and maybe not be productive at all? So this was really the, the major shift that I took um, in my business. And obviously, when my business, when I relaunched, it started to grow much easier, much quicker, with much healthier profit margins. And I was much healthier as well in, in my own personal life um, and in my physical body as well. So this was actually where I started to work as a coach and with women, I said, I need to show other women how to run a business, grow a business in their feminine energy, right? Because everything that's out there, everything, all the information that's available out there, all the business coaches, they're teaching a masculine um, methodology that may work amazingly for some women that have a more masculine energy, but not for all women and not for all people with more feminine energy. So I find that creatives, artists, um, healers, light workers, they tend to have a more feminine energy empaths, right? The people that are more sensitive to energy have a more feminine energy versus um, someone who is, you know, a, a goal setter, a hustler, someone who thrives on, on goals and um, desired outcomes and making shit happen versus the empaths, the creatives, the process manifestors, as I like to call them, they need to be in love with the process, not the outcome, because that's where their superpower lies. And when I started originally coaching, I was a business coach for women who wanted to set up and start a product-based business. However, that's evolved as I have evolved and now that's turned into personal development and life coaching versus just business. I love that. Yeah, you said a lot of great things there. And, you know, one of the ones that stuck out the most to me is the idea that this whole nine to five structure is made by men for men. And it's something too that I recognize that there tends to be some shaming that goes on with women that are stay-at-home moms nowadays and to me I think that's one of the most beautiful endeavors that any human being can partake in I mean I can't have a child I can't have that same connection with a child as a woman can and I think that's a beautiful piece that should be you know really treasured and should be really put on a pedestal because like this is a beautiful part of life and, and I even see women like you said that are you know, really in this corporate structure, nine to five that are, you know, having C-sections and then only taking a week off to then go back to work to then achieve more, do more. And to me, it's like, whoa, mm -hmm. to me, that's a line that's like, that's, that's going a little too far in my personal opinion. But I love the fact that you said that, you know, there's that other balance where people have different cycles. And I also see a lot of very successful entrepreneurial women that are mothers that are working, you know, in their own cycles and are having a lot of success doing that because mm. I find that women are more tuned into their body and tuned into their emotions and what, knowing when to rest than men are. Like you said, we tend to go, go, go. And again, this is masculine energy, feminine energy. Mm. I'm kind of generalizing with the genders here a little mm. bit, but mm. generally speaking, um, I tend to be someone who go, go, go. And then stop for two days straight. I, mm. yeah exactly <laughs> and that's what I actually just did over the over the holiday so Christmas Eve Christmas and the day after Christmas I basically part of it was just like it didn't seem right to be you know really pushing business at that time but also it was like this is a great timing for me to take a break because I've been go go going so 
and, and it's really interesting how you laid that out that a lot of that is just with uh, just the difference in energy and the difference in hormones and and that's something that you know it's not a bad thing or a good thing it just is and mm. if we can really play into our natural tendencies and play into our natural gifts we can really utilize these gifts instead of fighting the current instead of trying to swim upstream if we go with the flow that's going to make the world mm. of a difference Mm-mm, absolutely and you know, I think it's very important for us to um, acknowledge that, you know, we all need to take a sacred pause. We all need to stop and refuel ourselves and nurture ourselves and just come back to our center, right? Because when we're so goal orientated and we are because we have dreams, because we have desires, because we want to achieve things. When we're, when we're too focused on the goal, we're too, you know, living in the future and the future doesn't exist yet, right? Like who could have predicted 2020? Who could have <laughs> predicted how everything would have been thrown up in the air this year? So we need to give ourselves permission. Everyone needs to give ourselves permission to just stop and pause and, and listen. Listen to your body because your body gives you so much feedback your body's constantly speaking to you and, you know, the manifestation of diseases and pains and aches and um, different ailments is your body trying to give you feedback right. that you need to pay attention to me. And we're so in the West, particularly, we're so fixated on treating the symptom. Right. We're missing the information that is being given to us. So we're not actually good um, readers of the data that our body is giving us. Hundred percent, yeah, and it's something too that I think that you know people don't wake up thirty pounds overweight overnight. People don't wake up with heart disease overnight. That is a constant. <laughs> it's a chronic disease for a reason. It's called a chronic disease because it's been going on for a long time. And like you said, your body's giving you symptoms. And if you're just taking a pill or throwing a band aid over your symptoms, like you said, you're not listening to them. Their body's telling you a message. If you keep suppressing that message, it's going to build up and then it's going to get a whole heck of a lot worse that if you feel you know angry today it'd be much better for me to go hit my punching bag and get rid of some of that anger than just say anger you know i'm gonna ignore you i'm gonna swallow actually, swallow yeah. swallow yeah i'm gonna drink some alcohol i'm gonna you yeah. know smoke some pot or do whatever mm. i do and suppress that mm. but what if what if we just deal with it and what if we listen to that symptom and i think that that's something that I'd love to dive a little bit into, as you mentioned, with some of that victim consciousness earlier, because I think that's something that oftentimes is a symptom, but oftentimes is also a buildup of suppression, whether that's, you know, traumas we've had, and we all have had traumas in our life, whether that, you know, 2020 for I think most of us, no matter how well, like for me, the year went very well, but there's still some of that trauma, you know, there's Mm. still some of that time where, you know, I miss the isolation. Like I feel a little lonely at times, which, you know, normally I just go out and have live events a couple of times a month and that would get my, you know, networking vibe that I love to do. Mm-hmm. So I'd love for you to kind of dive into as it relates to the victim consciousness, how does mm-hmm. that manifest in the body and how can we utilize that as opposed to letting it consume us? Mm-hmm. Thank you. So the the three drama archetypes that we talk about in in psychology are the the victim, the martyr, and the prosecutor. And I love being able to understand when I'm playing out one of these drama archetypes. And I, I teach my clients as well to do the same because it's very important to understand when you're falling into one of these roles because what you're doing is you're stepping out of the hero role, you're stepping out of the protagonist and you're disempowering yourself by falling into one of these three drama archetypes. So the victim, why me, why me, why me? Everything's happening to me. And choosing, you don't know it at at the time, but you're choosing to remain helpless and hopeless, hoping that someone else will save me or someone else will have the answer or someone else knows better than me because I don't know, you know, why me? Um, the martyr, the martyr is, is really interesting because the martyr is the person that will do everything themselves, like total DIY people um, will make sure everyone else's needs are met and will also not know how to ask for and how to receive help. The martyr is the number one 
type of person that will burn out. Um, why? Because they don't know how to release the control, you know, micromanaging, not trusting other people to do things for you, not allowing yourself to receive permission. So all you are is do, do, do. Um, and then the prosecutor, really, really interesting um, drama archetype, is the one that blames everybody else why shit didn't work out you know he didn't do it and she didn't do it and he did this and she did this and it's not me it's them the thing is when you're falling into one of these three drama archetypes essentially what you're doing is you're disempowering yourself you're giving away your power and you're hoping or asking for someone else to be your solution and there's just too many variables in that equation. When you're asking for someone else to be the solution, asking for someone else to take responsibility, asking for someone else to do the thing that you need to be doing, then you may be waiting around forever and ever and ever because no one, no one cares more about your problems than you. Right. And that's a fact. Uh, <laughs> and that, if anyone says that they do, they're lying. <laughs> right, absolutely. And I think that what's important to note there is that even in terms of energetically, if we have this victim consciousness and we're looking for the worst case scenario, we're, you know, really just in that closed off state, we're not open to even receiving good things. We're just, we're attracting more of that negative energy. And not to say, I mean, I get into victim consciousness from time to time as well. I mean, I was in that probably about three days ago and it still happens every so often. And then sometimes I dive in and then, you know, my girlfriend's using one that reminds us, Hey, you know, you're kind of doing that thing where you're getting negative and and blaming other things so yeah. it happens no matter how far yeah. along we get with our personal yeah. development that that little archetype that mm. voice in our head still shows up but it's mm. just a matter of how quickly can we recognize it and mm. how can we shift our energy to be more into that abundant state yeah. and that's what i'd love to dive into is the now let's go to the opposite side so we mm. have the victim side which is you know drawing more of that negative energy in and basically repelling <laughs> the abundance mm. because you know, where focus goes, energy flows. That's one of my mm. little, little mottos I'd like to remind people of. So I'd love to shift into the side of abundance. Mm. How do we get from that state of victim mentality of poor me of it's their mm. fault, his fault, her fault, someone save me, I can't do it. Give me whatever to I can mm. do it. And I mm. am in a state of abundance. Mm. So, yeah, I, I, I just want to add a little side note there. The victim, I always say, like, when you're being a victim, you're basically a black hole. So it doesn't matter what people give you. It doesn't matter what you're attracting. It's never going to be enough. Why? Because your cup is leaking. You have a crack in your cup and you can't ever fill a cup that is leaking. Um, and then all, all three of these archetypes, as you beautifully um, pointed out, are a contracting energy, right? I'm closing down, closing off. And that is the opposite of abundance, which is an opening, an expansive energy. And when we're talking about, you know, creating our, our dreams, our desires, I don't talk about what am I attracting? I'm talking about what am I generating? Because you and I are both generators. Everyone is a generator. We are creators of the lives, the reality that we currently have. And I like to say that everything that you have and don't have is evidence of you wanting it. Woo! So that means if I have scarcity, if I have lack, if I have ill health, on an unconscious desire, because consciously no one wants that, on an unconscious desire, that must mean that I wanted this for me to have created this. Because you have created your, your reality. And this is where we talk about unconscious desires. I love, love, love talking about unconscious desires because your unconscious, your subconscious, in other words, will rule your life. And if you're not doing the subconscious work, if you're not doing that shadow work, then it doesn't matter what you're doing on a conscious level. It doesn't matter how much action you think you're taking. If, um, if your subconscious is working against you, it's like you have an in-house terrorist in your headquarters. Nothing you do will ever create the outcome, the desires, the goals that you want, because you are your own worst enemy. Yeah, I want to dive in there real quick and just say the mm -hmm. image that came to my head when you're saying that is that we're up here 
trying to build a third story and someone's tearing down the foundation, tearing down the first floor, tearing down the second yeah. floor. And we're up here building, thinking that we're building a skyscraper, but realistically it has no foundation. Mm -hmm. And, and one thing that I also really like, as you said about the subconscious desires mm -hmm. for me, you know, when I'm feeling that victimhood mentality, I try to think, you know, what about this do I want? And what do I like about this? What do I like about being in this state of neediness? And oftentimes mm -hmm. it's attention. Yes. You know, I want attention mm -hmm. because it's a, you know, ah, uh, well, if I kind of make a scene, put all this negative energy, people are bringing energy to me and they're mm -hmm. giving, you know, me attention. It may not be the good energy and the good attention that I want, but it's still attention. And I think that's a lot of time too. I think back to looking at little kids, you yes. know, or dogs. Even negative when, attention is attention, right? right? <laughs> Even with dogs, you know, dogs, mm -hmm. when they're, they want attention, they'll start tearing something up because then you're giving them attention. Again, it may not be the, the good attention, but it's attention nonetheless. So mm -hmm. I really love that aspect you said is that those subconscious desires, they're mm -hmm. going to run the show. Yeah. And it was actually Carl Jung that said, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will rule your life and you will call it fate. So classic victim, I totally put my hand up to this. I can I own that. it. <laughs> classic victim is I'm so unlucky, right? Right. Why am I so unlucky? So it has nothing to do with me, my actions, my unconscious desires. It's just that I was born unlucky, right? Everybody else is luckier than me. And whatever you believe will become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, and it almost sounds too simple to be, you know, true, I guess, to some people. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, that everyone's mindset has been such a big buzzword. Just change your thoughts and change your life. But it goes a lot deeper than that because you can't just switch off a thought that you've had or you've been carrying around since your, your formative years, a belief that you've had. So the belief system that was formed from the ages of zero to seven is – what your unconscious desires are written on. So that's always, that's essentially your operating system. And then everything else on top of that, your unconscious and conscious desires are programs, right? If the operating system is out of date, the programs will never run optimally. So we're talking about subconscious desires. We're talking about basically, you know, when you say mindset, we're looking at the tip of the iceberg. And that's, you know, there's so much more to it that's below the surface. And so, you know, as we kind of talked about with the, the victimhood mentality, with getting into that state of abundance, I'd love to just dive a little bit deeper into what are some tools and techniques that you utilize to really target that underwater portion of the iceberg so that people can really analyze themselves. I know archetypes, I love working with archetypes as well. Mm -hmm. But what are some other tools that people can utilize to really recognize and accept the mm. underwater portion of the iceberg? Mm. So I'd love to just, as a caveat, add that it's essential to give yourself permission to receive help and support. So there's, there's so much that you can do by yourself, for yourself, but we can't see our own blind spots. And that is where working with a coach, working with a therapist, working with a mentor is going to help you because all that they will do essentially is facilitate um, the expansion, the growth, the identifying the issues. Because obviously, if you knew what was holding you back, you'd already get it out the way, right? If you knew your blocks, you'd already have chiseled them away and get on with, with living, get on with expanding. Of course. And then also to the other side of it, too, is that maybe people are aware, but they are so attached to that identity of themselves. And I think mm. that that's also a really big challenge is yes. that I want to change. I want to be this person, but I'm not that person. And, yeah. you know, for me, when I first was hearing about manifesting, oh, just, you know, just visualize it, manifest mm. it. And to me, it was mm. like, well, I can think about that all day. But I'm not that person right now. I'm still sitting here with my eyes closed, <laughs> the vision board. Oh my God. This yeah. Person. So I'd love for you to just kind of dive in. What are some ways that we can mm. really feel mm. that that manifestation, mm. feel that visualization? And how mm. can we really take practical steps to move forward mm. with getting from where we are now to where we want to be? 
Exactly. So number one, you need to know what type of manifester you are. Are you an outcome manifester or a process manifester? Because a lot of the tools that are being shared, that are being shown, that are being taught are tools in alignment with outcome manifester masculine energy right it's like yeah put the lamborghini on your vision board visualize it go and test drive it now go out and make it happen the thing with a process manifester an empath a creative an artist a romantic the softer more feminine energy people um their desire their goal is also one of their biggest triggers <laughs> which is why you know it's so so important to work with your subconscious mind, not against it. Because I do believe that you need to put energy and effort into everything, right? You need to put effort, like you said, where, where energy goes, focus. Ooh, where focus goes, energy flows. There we go. Um, if you're not putting any energy into manifesting, into creating this vision, this life that you have pictured for yourself, then it's never going to manifest. The thing with manifestations from the moment that you have a desire your desire already exists all your manifestations are already available in the ether and to manifest means to make real so all your desires all your dreams are already real just from the instant that you birth that idea that you birth that dream but is it real for you and if your life doesn't illustrate it, then there's an unconscious desire there to not make it real for you. Um, so, yeah, vision boards are amazing. They're fun, right? Sitting down and meditating every day, that's, that's cool. That's essential to helping you to center and come back into your body. However, that's not going to make real the things that you want to make real because the subconscious is... I, I very, very um, conservatively say 80%, although I do believe like the, the subconscious makes up like 90%, 99% of your energy. So in the subconscious, the, the iceberg, the, the massive chunk underneath the surface of the water, um, that is your stored vibrational energy. Everything else above the surface of the water is your transitional energy. So if we're comparing our 80% stored vibrational energy versus the 20% effort or willpower actions, if that 80% is working against you, it doesn't matter how much of that 20% energy you're using to manifest because you're being slowed down or you're blocking on an unconscious level the things that you desire, that you dream. So know what type of manifester you are outcome process if you're an outcome manifester amazing you're one lucky little fox go out there and make it happen if you're a process manifester and it just feels like hard work like everything feels like hard work that means that your attention needs to go on clearing and raising your stored vibrational energy it's not actually that much about the actions that you're taking in your vision boards and your meditation it's about clearing yourself as a channel your your stored vibrational energy so that you're not sabotaging yourself if you have patterns of self-sabotage of procrastination of self-abandonment of self-neglect then that is again unconscious desires that are ruling your life beautifully said and, you know, one thing we chatted about yesterday before we were on the podcast and we were talking was about the topic of toxic positivity. <laughs> and I'd love to dive into that a little bit because I know that on the manifestation topic, we and we can uh, do affirmations, we can do all these things that we're saying, I am this, I am that, which is great. And those are great tools when used correctly. Mm -hmm. But like you said, or we were talking about yesterday, is that there's also sometimes an overload of positivity to the point that we're neglecting some of the very real aspects of ourselves that may be deemed negative, but kind of like we were saying earlier, are more symptoms that we need to address. So I'd love to kind of go into that toxic positivity. And also, we talked about with the, um, you know, the feminine masculine balance and how some of that can be, you know, a little, a little too much in some areas. I'd love to just hear your, your, uh, your piece on that. Mm. 
So let's start with toxic positivity. So um, in outcome manifesting tools, we have been taught, we have been taught or have been told that think will manifest. So if you're thinking negative thoughts, then that's what you're going to manifest. And we're almost scared to think or feel what we are genuinely thinking and feeling, right? Because it's like, oh my God, oh my God, if I think about it, then I'm going to manifest it. So therefore I just have to push it out of my mind. I have to suppress it. I have to repress it. It, it doesn't serve me to, to feel angry. It doesn't serve me to feel sad. It doesn't serve me to grieve because I need to stay positive. I need to stay positive. No, <laughs> staying positive when you have unprocessed emotions um, is only repressing and suppressing and storing that energy in your stored vibrational um, stored vibrational energy. It's you're not you're not releasing it, you're storing it. So that will um, that will essentially become part of your unconscious desires. That's why we have you know that when, when you said in the beginning, we all have trauma, absolutely every single one of us. It doesn't matter if you had a great childhood. It doesn't matter if you had great parents. Um, it's not just people with difficult childhoods that have trauma. Everyone has trauma. Why? Because the child's mind has such a limited understanding and such a limited experience of the world. So you will form certain ideas and certain beliefs based on your very limited experiences about the world and about other people and about yourself that were relevant at the time that you were two, three, four, five years old. But as a 34-year-old, as a 35-year-old, as a 40-year-old, those beliefs of a three-year-old are no longer relevant or appropriate, but they're still stored there. So that's that operating system. And if you are only focusing on you know the the happy colors of the rainbow you're missing the other shades that the rainbow has to offer and you're essentially missing what it really means to be able to feel the feedback because every emotion is is feedback if i have grief if i have anger if i have sadness every emotion is feedback and if i'm not processing my emotions I am self-denying or, or self-abandoning this feedback, these feelings. And that pattern of self-abandonment will start to play out in other areas of my life, not just in my emotions. Because what is, what is a feeling? Emotion, energy in motion. Energy never goes away. It needs to move. And if I'm not allowing it to move, it's been stored and stored. And if it's been stored in an unprocessed way, it will, it has to manifest somewhere. It's like holding a cork underwater. You might push it down underwater here, it's going to pop up somewhere else. So it will start to affect other areas of your life, maybe even possibly your health, as it did for me. Um, it might start to manifest as disease and pains and aches and depression, anxiety. Absolutely. And I love what you said there of, you know, how we do something is going to affect other areas of our life as well. And I think that's one thing that, you know, I, I talk about with my team as it relates to business is that, you know, how we approach our business is probably showing up in other aspects of our life as well. If we have resistance to, let's say, sales in our business, mm. you know, for the most part, I view sales, especially in the entrepreneurial journeys, I'm selling myself, you know, yes, I'm selling a product, I'm selling a program, I'm selling a whatever, but I'm selling myself. And so if I'm having trouble selling myself, where else in my life am I having trouble selling myself? Mm. Where else am I having trouble communicating what I think could help people and, and what I want? What are my mm. needs? What do I, you know, what is this exchange that I'm trying to embark on? And that's where, you know, for me, things like taking care of my health with exercise, exercise mm. is a huge piece for me that, like you said, energy and motion. And that's where, to me, when I exercise, it allows my emotions to move when I'm mm. sitting for too long. And I'm not really an anxious person, but anxiety will start to creep in if I'm too stagnant because my energy is not in motion. And yeah. so that's something that I think is very common when, you know, people say that they have anxiety or they're overstressed. 
a lot of times is they're simply not moving enough. And that's yeah. one of my most basic suggestions to people is just go for a walk. Just go, mm-hmm. like, just go for, like, get some stop fresh what you're air. Doing. Yeah, just get some fresh air, go for a walk, yeah. move your body, breathe. Yeah. All these yeah. little things that are so basic, but yeah. kind of like coming full circle where we started with is in this lifestyle of working a nine to five, of this, if you're an entrepreneur, you work all day, every day, you neglect your health, you neglect these other yeah. areas. You know, that's the same thing as suppressing there. So even if you are accomplishing a goal and you're, you know, successful, I'm putting that in quotes for anyone listening, can't see me, you know, you may not be able to really enjoy your life because you're neglecting the motion, the movement of energy. So I know that we could go on and on for hours about this, but I'd love to kind of just have you recap some of the mm. some of the tips and tricks that you utilize on a regular basis so that you can you know leave the listeners with something that they can practically go, go out with today mm. and, and do something to improve their life mm. so one of the best tools that is available to each and every single one of us is breath right you absolutely need to consciously intentionally breathe And the first thing that I teach everyone is, you know, the five by five by five breath. Just start every day with breath work. And obviously there's so many other, you know, Wim Hof and all these other breath work techniques that you can go and look into if you're new to it. But when we are feeling stressed, anxious, fearful, um, it's mainly because our body, our breath has started to become shallow, has started to become smaller, more contracted. And we're going into survival mode. When we're talking about expansion and abundance, we're talking not about surviving, we're talking about thriving. And in order to do that, I need to nurture my body, give my body what it needs so that it can support me. And one of the most beautiful ways that everyone should start their day is just open a window get some fresh air in. It doesn't matter if it's raining. It doesn't matter if it's cold. It doesn't matter if it's hot. Get some fresh air in and do the five by five breath. So that means breathing in for five slowly, holding the breath for five counts, exhaling for five and staying on empty for five. And you can repeat that five times. So five breaths of five by five. And that just helps to center your nervous system, to send that signal to your nervous system that I'm safe here. I don't need to go into survival mode. I don't need to feel fearful or stressed or scared, right? Give all your major organs enough oxygen so that your body can function optimally. And when your body is functioning optimally, then your mind can start to function optimally as well. That is the first thing that I would say, breath. The second tool, which again is free and available to everyone, is meditation. Meditation. And I can't remember where I heard this, but I love it so much. I keep using it. Meditation is how we uh, hear, if you will, guidance, right? Prayer is... Prayer has been described as us speaking to the divine, speaking to God. If you're religious or spiritual, it doesn't matter what name you put on it. For me, it's one and the same thing, and that is unconditional love. So prayer is when we speak. Meditation is when we listen. And when you meditate, you're essentially spending time with yourself, with your thoughts, with your body, and yes, with your breath again. So connecting back to your breath. And listening to the feedback that is coming up when you get a thought, where does that thought trigger an emotion in your body? Because you have um, you have energy vortexes on your body. So wherever a thought is triggering a contraction or a pain um, in my body, it's essentially telling me something about that thought. Uh, one of the one of the One of the tools, again, a third tool that I would absolutely suggest is do your shadow work. Unconscious desires. Am I questioning in a way that is empowering, right? The quality of your solutions will only ever be equal to the quality of your questions. So if I'm asking disempowering questions, why me, why me, why me, instead of what 
do I have to learn from this? How can I improve from this? Or what solutions are available to me despite the shit show that's going on? You know, you will never be able to find solutions if you're not asking open-ended questions. I love that. Well, that's beautifully said. And, you know, I love the three tools you had there. So we have breathing, we have meditation, and we have shadow work. And I think that those are great tools. And, you know, the, the common theme there is opening up. You know, when you're breathing, you're opening up your lungs. When you're meditation, you're opening up the channel to allow more energy to come in. And when you're doing shadow work, you're opening, you're being vulnerable. So Mm -hmm. I love that all these themes involve opening yourself up. Mm -hmm. So Anastasia, this has been an awesome conversation. Where can people find you, learn more, follow along, get involved with what you're doing? (laughs) Thank you so much, Rob. We could go on and on and on, couldn't we? We might need to do a part two at some point because I think we can go for two more hours. (laughs) I mean, um, yeah, you can definitely find me on Instagram. So I am under Art of Aligned Living or, and I believe that you will put the link in the description of this um, show, um, my Facebook group is as well. It's Art of Aligned Living, but I have just recently changed it to my name. <laughs> so Anastasia Girali, but you can find me under both those names, Art of Aligned Living or Anastasia Girali. Uh, I know that my surname is a little bit tricky for people to, um, to spell. So follow the links that Rob's going to share with you. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. This has been a lot of fun and I appreciate your time here. So everyone check her out. I'll put those links in the description box here. Thank you for listening and have a beautiful day.